Morning. It is Saturday, kind of mid morning, around 10 o'clock. Uh, just got a little bit of weather to talk about today. Uh, we got that fire danger. They've elevated the risk of fire in the Central Valley to a red flag warning, primarily for wind and wind because it's going to be cooler today. Temperatures in the Central Valley, Sacramento goes 84 degrees. Redding goes 83 degrees, 82 degrees. There's a bunch of clouds up around Mount Shasta. They might even see some scattered showers. Temperatures in Southern California are mild as well, but this wind is going to cause problems for firefighters if fires get started. And uh, of course, that is uh, pretty typical for this time of year. Um, but yeah, so this is the system. This is the low that you, we talked about a lot yesterday and the day before that, but this is the driver of everything right now. And this low continues to drop in and it's continuing to displace the high and the gradient between them is the wind, right? So you got a pretty good north Kind of, it's it's a little bit of everything. You'll see the winds coming up, but a lot of north northwest in the wind out on the beach at Ocean Beach. A lot of blowing sand in San Francisco out in the out in the sand dunes. Uh, we'll get right to the watches and warnings. Uh, this is the red flag warning, and again, this when I look at this map, I go, oh well, that picks up Interstate 99, 50, 80. In other words, when you have red flag warnings along a, a highway corridor like this, you, the potential for fire starts is there. We talked about this yesterday in terms of, um, you know, the, the sparks, catalytic converter, chain dragging, so on and so forth. So it, I expect to see a couple of fires pop up. It's not unusual at all. But the winds are strong enough that it could drive. Um, the humidities are moderate, mo not horribly dry. It's not, the fuel moistures are not horribly dry, but the wind is enough that it definitely requires a red flag warning. And then offshore, you've got a, a, a small craft advisory and gale warnings off the San Francisco coast inside Santa Cruz Bay, you or Monterey Bay, you have a small craft advisory. So near critical fire threat gusts to 45 miles an hour, East Bay Hills, Santa Clara Hills, and the Gavilan Range and San Benito Monterey counties. So it covers everything. We've got a lot of red flag activity in California, really just for today. Now this is uh, watchduty.org. This is awesome. It is a site that we're very familiar with. It's on my links, but this will show you where the current fires are. So I look at this now and I go, okay, awesome. Not too much going on. At least, you know, they got some stuff in Utah, but out west, um, let's see if I can move this up a little bit here. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and the, the areas here, see the light yellow up around, looks like that's up around Auburn. That's a fire that has been kind of getting squished. The brown around that or the gray means it's being contained. It's slowly being suppressed. These bright reds mean very little, if any, containment at all. So you can click on this. This is a right now map. It's updated aw awesomely, like every couple of minutes, basically. Um, and it will track the big fire. So now we know we got wind. So when we have a big fire, we worry about the potential for evacuations. And you do have evacuations. They're calling this the Connor Flyer. It is basically, what is it, just out towards Douglas County, kind of out in the boonies in terms of cities, right? You're well south of Minden, well south of uh, Mootsville, up north of Double Spring. But there's Topaz Lake down here. But you've got this you've got these evacuation uh concerns here so that's a lot of area so there's ranches and things out there we can take a look let's see it's thirteen thousand acres zero content uh, percent containment uh it is looking like this this is the fire as seen from a, one of the live cameras let's see if i can scooch i can't scoot it over but um you can see the smoke from it the winds out in this area are if we look around towards out know, in this area you know there's a f gust to 20 it's blown about, kind of got a north trajectory, about 20 miles an hour. It's not horribly, horribly windy. It's, it's a manageable fire fight, but it's big. It's a big fire. And the winds today will only increase because as that low, as this, gets closer to the high, and that's as it goes through, and that's what's happening today, it will trigger a stronger pressure gradient. And so we could easily see stronger winds. We will easily see stronger winds develop. So this is the national map. Um, this is, they put this, National Weather Service puts this out every day. This is, these are all the watches, warnings, advisories. And there's a lot going on, man. Like this area, this is all right through the Dakotas, 
out through uh, Pennsylvania, New York State, up in New Hampshire. These are heat advisories, heat warnings, extreme heat warnings, not just for today, not just for tomorrow, but through Monday and Tuesday uh, in some areas. So we'll take a closer look at that. But this is millions of people, pets, animals, unhoused, that are under a heat dome. So this, in terms of the weather story in the, in the, on, in, in, in the country, this is huge. This is a huge deal. And you're going to get air quality. You're already having air quality issues here. We go look at these areas for today. These are red flag warnings, red flag warning in the Central Valley, wind advisories in that light uh, gray or brown area. This is one, this is out towards northeastern Nevada. This is a air quality alert, and I suspect it has to do with blowing sand and dust. Um, air quality alert, unhealthy for everyone. Um, I don't think they're really specifying. Nevada. Breathing, I think it's from dust, air quality, yeah. I mean, they didn't really get specific in that, but it's, I imagine it's for dust and what have you. So let's go back here. Sorry to be bouncing around. Let's see, I'll go here, okay. So there's dust, and then out here, you've got more red flag warnings and wind advisories. So it's like, that's over half the country, half the, uh, yeah, more than half the country is, is enveloped in some kind of weather concern. And heat, um, red flag warnings, they're kind of dangerous, right? They're not, it's not, these aren't frost advisories or winter weather advisory. These are, these are significant. This is the uh, a product, I kind of like this actually. The weather Source puts this together. Let me back this down a little bit. Um, can I do that? Yeah. And so this is just a combination of, this is really about, I want you to see the dangerous weather in terms of heat and how it moves across the country. This is today. The red is major heat concern. The purple is, what are they calling it? There's a, they got terms for all these things. The purple is, um, let me get that going. Yeah, come in. Extreme, yeah, okay. So these are extreme heat areas. This is Saturday. The extreme heat is in Ohio, Iowa, Nebraska, and Kansas. And then, boom, it clicks a little bit east. Now, don't forget, the red is, is major. The orange is moderate. So these are, these are heat risks. These are, it's about, they, they kind of factor in overnight temperature, daytime high, air quality, uh, urban centers. It's sort of like this. Basically, these are the areas that are going to be impacted the most, not just by temperature, but by all the other uh, metrics that are involved in, in living in a, in a big city or in the rural area. So this is Sunday. You see the shift. And what you're seeing is this trough replacing and pushing this high this way. So this is all going to follow the ridge, and the trough is going to keep working its way out towards the west. So eventually it cools. But that is Sunday. Here comes Monday. Look at that. That's Chicago, it's New York. Oh my gosh, that's some big heat. Look at Tuesday. Drops into more Chicago. I mean, these are, uh, these are big, big, big temperatures, big humidities, and just dangerous conditions for all. That's Wednesday, that's Thursday, and that's Friday. So it's going to be interesting to see how that all goes down. What, how, um, it, it, does it mean that'll happen? To some extent, yeah. But in terms of, how hot will it get? How many problems are they going to have? Because you get into all sorts of problems when you get heat, as we talked about. Uh, we'll watch that. Here's that eddy that is just having a tough time going away in Southern California. It's because of the strong winds, right? The winds get blowing uh, down the coast like this. And they basically the fog's been blowing out. The, the inversion can't exist. But then it gets down here and it hits the point conception. And it starts to, it's a topographic thing. It starts to drag. And it starts to spin. Isn't that interesting? So Southern California eddy, which is uh, typical for this time of year, but it creates its own weather. Like it creates, it, it, sometimes it helps the fog go away. Sometimes it makes the fog stick around. Uh, but either way, it is a thing. And it's been down. It's been down that area for a little while. Um, sorry about that. I'm kind of rushing because I'm heading out of here pretty soon to, to go groove on my day. But I kind of wanted to get this out. Here's the low pressure center. Um, do you see it in translating? pushing through, pushing poo, and then that high gradually breaks down out east. In our area, right here, you know where that is, you see that trough just lingering, just lingering. And that's, now we're into Tuesday. Little bit of break on Wednesday next week, a little warmer on t probably Wednesday next week. 
and Thursday looks a little warmer and then it cools down again. So we're our pattern. I mean, this is a real, this is pattern is very, uh, it's very spring like. Um, what I can tell you is that that this low right over us is pushing east. And you'll see that donut out around the Carolinas, this area, starting to push off shore. And then that trough, see how it translates? Now it's cooler in the east. A lot going on. This is uh, purple air. I, I just think about air quality. When I think about heat, because I know that uh, the you know the heat, the heat is high pressure and it creates inversions. Well, there's an inversion, and this inversion is going to last. And so there's not a lot of opportunity for mixing of the atmosphere vertically or even horizontally, for that matter. And so the stuff sits on you, and it's stuff you know your 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 stove puts out stuff, your car puts out stuff, your industry puts out stuff. Um, dust, you know, farming puts out, so it's stuff in the atmosphere. This is particulate matter, 2.5 micrometers or less. And the reason we monitor that is because it's super dangerous because it's small enough. Bigger particles really can't get in easily to your bloodstream, but PM 2.5, uh, particulate matter, I believe, my understanding is it has the ability to get into your bloodstream. It's, it's small. It's like, um, let's see, 2.5. Yeah, I think it's 2.5 is, uh, human hair is, I think, 5 micrometers to 10 micrometers thick. And this stuff is about half the width of a human hair. That doesn't sound right. Maybe it's more, maybe it's 50 micrometers. Yeah, I should stay out of that. But anyway, you've got, you've got the uh, air quality to think about all week on the East Coast. These are the forecast highs for today. Uh, 81 in Sacramento, 80 in Redding. You're like, well, dude, there's no fire danger here. Well, the fire danger exists in the form of wind, and that's where we are now. Uh, and you, in, along the coast, too, even though it's, it, the humidities are higher because the wind is essentially kind of like this. It's downshore. I'd call that, I call it a, I call it kind of a, I'd say north, northwest, um, but it's sort of a side shore wind, and that's enough to keep humidity sort of visiting the Central Valley. Temperatures out in Nevada, not that hot either. Daytime high in Lovelock, 67 degrees today. So let's look at tomorrow. Warmer, because that low goes through, right? And as the low goes through, temperatures will pop back up very quickly. The um, Mount Shasta is getting a little bit of uh, cloud cover, maybe even a little bit of snow. We'll take a little bit of snow up high. We'll take a look at that. We'll take a breath. Hmm. Where'd they go? Dang. Puffins. Where are they when you need them? <laughs> oh, they're up there. So nah, I don't know what that is. This is the puff. Oh, there's a puffin. No, I don't even know what that is. Let's go backwards and see if we can find a puffin. There's a puffin. This is a while back, I guess. So what do we say? We got today. It's going to be cooler, but windy and fire danger. Sort of counterintuitive. Tomorrow, the winds will be less and the red flag warning for the state will go away. But we'll still see, we'll see temperatures warm up. Um, and it'll be a little nicer. Sunday, I guess I should just point out, Sunday will be the nicest day of the week. And there's a, I guess that's a mirror. Yeah. Nobody's correcting me on this yet. I can't wait till somebody does. Because you bird guys are awesome. Okay, so that's Puffins just because. This is Mount Shasta. Remember we were looking, this is today. Let me see if I can do this. Um, and the reason I bring this up is I want you to see that low coming in. It looks like some rain shafts a little bit. I don't see any rain on the camera, though. But that's that low moving in in Northern California. And you should see it start to break out. Uh, windy up there yesterday in Mount Shasta. Getting a little seasick. Yeah, yeah, cloud cover. So it's not a hot day in Mount Shasta. Like Mount Shasta City is in the low 60s. But the fire concerns exist because that low as it moves in creates wind, which creates fire danger. South Lake Tahoe, beautiful shot, Heavenly Valley. Interesting, There's, I would expect the, uh, to be a little windier up here, looking at the trees. Yeah, huh, not really moving. Um, but it's not, it's not that windy yet. This is the cloud cover from that system. We're looking, we're looking pretty much north, northwest. That's the system way up there that's moving down. Those clouds represent sort of the leading edge of the system. This is San Francisco's Ocean Beach. If you are going to the beach, it's going to be windy, breezy. I saw a gentleman walking on the beach. There's a guy with his dog walking on the beach, and the wind was just howling. Walking this way, not bad. Walking towards the cliff house, 
really bad, just really windy. A lot of sand on the Great Highway as well. Steamer's Lane, Steamer Lane, the lane inside the hook. It doesn't, it's interesting. The wind looks like it's much further. Like, see, you can just barely see the wind offshore. See the white caps out there? So the wind's got, it's interesting. There's a little, uh, see it out there? It's really howling, but it's not, it's not very close in. It's more, the wind's a little bit further offshore. So <clears throat> inside the bay, not too bad today. So what did we talk about? We talked about everything. The idea that <clears throat> red flag warnings are going to be a part of our day um, in the Bay Area. And that we should, if you see a spark or a smoke or anything, just make mention of it. Keep an eye on watchduty.org. It's an awesome website. And in this case, we can see that, I'll just check it before we go, make sure no fire started. Uh, this thing literally, it updates, man. So if you still smell smoke and you don't know where it's coming from, this bad boy will pick it up pretty quick. Here's a fire up in, uh, up in Oregon. This is uh, for 500 acres, 35% contained. Looks like they got a good handle on it and no pictures. Okay, that's it. Watchduty.org, that's your friend today. Uh, tomorrow's the best day on the weekend. Less wind, warmer, and fire danger will be, will be mitigated quite a bit. Okay, see you back here.